Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. My beloved brothers and sisters, we must commence with the takbir wherein we should always on the day of Eid say Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. That Allah is the greatest indeed, Allah is the greatest. There is none worthy of worship besides Allah. Indeed, Allah is the greatest. Allah is the greatest and unto him belongs all praise. This is the instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala where he tells us in the verses of fasting. They should complete the prescribed time of fasting and they should declare the greatness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all this has been prescribed in order for them to express gratitude to Allah. Every time you have engaged in dedicated worship for a period of time, Allah gives you a day to rejoice. Look at the two Eids that we have. Have you thought to yourself, that they are preceded by great acts of worship. And as a result of that, Allah gives you what you deserve. And that is a day to rejoice and a day of happiness. No matter what problems you and I may be going through in our personal lives, whether there has been loss of lives in our own families amongst us, whether there is oppression that's happening across the globe, like we witness at the moment in Palestine, in many other countries, there is an instruction of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the midst of all of that. You must take the time to declare the greatness of Allah and to rejoice at the fact that Allah allowed you to worship him through a season of worship. In this case, Eid al-Fitr, the season of worship is the month of Ramadan. So the happiness and the rejoicing is about what? It is about the fact that I was given an instruction by Allah to worship him dedicatedly through the month and I worshiped him through the month. So I'm thanking Allah. Qul bi fadlillahi wa bi rahmatihi fabithalika falyafrahu Say that it is the virtue of Allah and His mercy that should actually make you rejoice. That's what you should be happy about. It is better than what they amass in terms of material wealth of this world. People get excited when they have a good business deal. People get excited when they've earned, when they found a job. People get excited when something good happens on earth. You have a new car, you have a conveyance, whatever else it may be. Yes, there is a type of excitement as a human being. But Allah says the true excitement should be when you have earned the mercy of Allah and when you have earned his virtue and favor. And what is that favor? That favor is each time you have been accepted by Allah to engage in an act of worship. You deserve to be happy and you should be happy and excited. Do you know why? Because it is only Allah who guides. How many times a day in every salah do we say, <laughs> Guide us to the straight path, the path of those whom you have favored not the path of those who have gone astray or those who have earned your anger, etc, etc. You and I know so many times a day we ask Allah for guidance. So when Allah has given you that guidance, surely you need to praise Allah. It is better than anything you can amass because what you have amassed, you're going to leave it behind on this earth. But what you have presented forth for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in terms of dedicated acts of worship, you will definitely reap its reward not only in this world, but even in the next. The same would apply to the next Eid that we have two months, ten days after this. It is Eid al-Adha wherein Allah has granted elevation of status to those ten days of Dhul Hijjah. And we are taught to engage in extra acts of worship. Although in that case, a lot of it is not compulsory, but it is voluntary. Whereas Ramadan, the fasting is compulsory. 
But when we've completed that and when the Hujjaj who have gone for Hajj have completed many of their rituals that they need to fulfill or acts of worship, should we say, Allah says, this is the day of Eid. That is to do with the next Eid. This particular one today is a day you have to thank Allah for. You have to thank Allah for Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, Walillahi alhamd. Thank Allah. We recognize our Maker. What do we say? Ashhadu an la ilaha illa Allah, wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan Rasulullah. I bear witness that there is none worthy of worship besides Allah, and I bear witness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, is the Messenger of Allah. Whoever utters that statement is automatically my brother, my sister of a higher level than that of blood. That is the reason why today we are in pain, tremendous pain to witness the disunity among the Muslim Ummah. Hence, we have the problems that we have due to that disunity. Evidence of it is in the Quran. Do not dispute amongst one another. Do not be disunited amongst yourselves because then you will be unsuccessful and you will lose all of your might as a powerful nation or the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Why are we great in number, billions of us across the globe? Why is it that we find no successes? Anybody can trample over us. The most we can do is perhaps announce on social media that something wrong is happening to us. It does not go beyond that in most cases. We feel good. Muslims feel that they have solved a problem when they have announced on social media that they have the problem. Have you ever thought of that? Whereas in actual fact, the true method of solving the problem here, Allah tells you, you want might? You really want power as an ummah? Your might will be lost when you are disunited, when you are fighting with one another, when you don't have that patience. Allah says, Isbiru in Allah sabirin You want to know who Allah is with, who the power of Allah is with, who the help of Allah is with. It is with those who bear patience, those who restrain themselves, those who understand we belong to a family. We should be standing up for one another. Here the Prophet ﷺ tells us so powerfully regarding the same ummah. Do not become disbelievers after me, pretending to be believers, yet you are killing one another. Allahu Akbar. That is what Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has said. Today is the day of Eid. It is the day of reconciliation. It is the day of seeking forgiveness and forgiving. Don't you want the forgiveness of Allah? Learn to make peace with your brothers and sisters whom you are disputing with. That will solve the problem of the ummah. We will always have minor differences because that's the plan of Allah. Whenever you have any two people, be they brothers and sisters or parents and children, any two people, even spouses who love each other so much, there has to be some difference because that's the plan of Allah. He wants to test you. Are you going to be able to work with each other with your differences or you want to lose your might? You want to lose your power? You want to lose your everything and you will fail as an ummah. La ilaha illallah. Then we have another narration of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam wherein he tells us very clearly that the believers are like a single body. Subhanallah. Kal jasadil wahid. Al mu'minuna kal jasadil wahid. The believers are like a single body. Idha shtaka minhu udu. Tada'a lahu sa'irul jasadi bis sahri wal humma. If a single organ happens to be in pain, the entire body will be restless and will be in pain. Subhanallah. Is that what's happening today? Today we're excited when a part of us is in pain. Sometimes we ourselves are inflicting pain on the others, let alone feeling their pain. Big difference between the two. Look at us. We have small differences amongst each other. We inflict so much of pain on our own brothers and sisters, our family members, members of our ummah, others whom we might not agree totally with, but they share the shahada, La ilaha illallah, Muhammadur Rasulullah. We have made them struggle and suffer with our own hands. When the hadith says, if someone else had made them suffer, you should have felt the pain. Forget about that. We have actually gone beyond that. 
and we have inflicted the pain. It is a day of rejoicing, a day of happiness, a day of goodness, my brothers, my sisters. But it is a day of realization of the reality. We would not be bleeding the way we are bleeding everywhere across the globe if we cared for one another. If we stood by the advice of the same Nabi that we all claim to follow, what is his instruction? In fact, it is the instruction of Allah. Allah says, indeed, the believers are brothers. They are brothers. So, Aslihu bayna akhawaykum actually means that it is your duty as believers to make peace between two of you who are not getting along. Make amends, resolve the problem. When you see two believers not getting along, whoever they are, it's your duty to go out of your way to make peace between them and to solve the problem. That's your duty. That's my duty. This is Eid. You are only going to taste the true joy of Eid when your heart is clean. With the dirty heart, there is no Eid for anyone. You might want to wear new clothes. Indeed, Eid is not a day of rejoicing for the one who wears new clothes. No, it is for the one who fears Allah, who fears the punishment of Allah. Eid is not a day for the one who's just going to have sweet meats and sweet dishes and whatever else. It is for the one who fears his Lord, who understands and realizes there is a greater meaning to the day of Eid, Eid al-Fitr. I'm excited because as an Ummah, as an Ummah, we fasted and as an Ummah, we have broken the fast. You should fast the day everyone around you is fasting and you should break your fast the day everyone around you is breaking the fast. Because you are one Ummah, you are one nation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the true essence of this beautiful day of Eid. Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, La ilaha illa Allahu, Allahu Akbar, Allahu Akbar, walillahi alhamd. My brothers and sisters, as much as we are going to rejoice this day, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, think of those who are struggling, make dua for them, call out to Allah for them as well. May Allah grant them victory. May Allah grant them goodness. May Allah grant them success. May Allah alleviate the suffering of those who are struggling and suffering. Even in our own midst, there are some of us silently going through tremendous problems. My brother, my sister, we love you with our hearts. Here is a dua for you. Oh Allah, make it easy for our brothers and sisters who are struggling in whatever way they are struggling. Oh Allah, those who are sick and ill, grant them cure. Oh Allah, those who have passed away, grant them rahmah and mercy. Oh Allah, we ask you to grant us all the goodness that Muhammad, peace be upon him, asked of you. And we seek protection from all the harm that he sought protection from. For indeed, you are our Lord. My brothers and sisters, a beautiful day. Spend it with your families. Spend it with your friends. It's a day of eating and drinking. It is, but it's not a day of wasting. Enjoy it. Be tolerant of one another. Some people might argue, should I go to my family or my wife's family? MashaAllah. The reality is if you're living nearby, you could visit both. Why not? May Allah grant us ease. Why do you need to choose? You can visit both and you should because subhanallah, it's a day of happiness. It's a day of rejoicing. Enjoy it. Today is a day of halal party. Notice I use the word halal. The simple reason is when we nowadays say partying, people think of haram things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu ala nabina Muhammad.